Hello, Grace St. Luke's. I am Laura Geddes, Associate Rector here at Grace St. Luke's, and I'm also a lover of stories and storytelling. And I thought this morning we might spend some time hearing some stories, sharing some stories, reading a poem about stories, and talking about an opportunity coming up where we can go even deeper with stories. Because everyone has a story to tell. Everyone. Every one of us is a storyteller. And I can think of many storytellers in my life but one who stands out especially is Randolph Kirkland, also known as Ranny. He lived in South Carolina near Pauley's Island, just north of Charleston. And every year we would go see him and his wife Trish when we would make our yearly and summer trip to the beach. I would wait in just breathless anticipation about uh, what story would be the one that he would share for that visit. He would have the most marvelous stories, stories about his mysterious missing finger or telling the story about the ghost who was famous around those parts called the gray ghost who would walk up and down the beach warning of upcoming storms and hurricanes. He had always a little twinkle in his eye, um, always up to a little mischievousness, and uh, he always had me leaning in. And I can still picture him doing that as well, leaning in with my brother and myself, uh, about to tell his story with this shocking white hair and beard. He even smoked a pipe with apple tobacco <laughs> that smelled so good <laughs> and uh, it curled, that smoke curled around his head and that just of course added to the ambiance and the experience of his lovely um, and exciting and sometimes very dangerous stories that he would share. But what I remember particularly and my takeaway from those times is the, how his stories connected me to him and, um, and made me think about my own stories and also how I wanted to interact with the world and how full the world was of life, of death, of love, of resilience, of rascalness, um, and certainly full of mystery. And I will never forget the summer that he asked me to tell him a story after the many years of his wonderful stories and what that meant in that invitation to not only be seen, but also to be heard and to recognize that my story also needed and was cherished. What a gift. Because our stories, all of our stories are sacred. It's not only our Bible, which is sacred text. I truly believe that each one of us and our stories are sacred texts. If for a moment, if we consider ourselves sacred texts then, and if holy ground is everywhere, which I believe it is, then each of our journeys and daily lives are chocked full, chocked full of the divine. And there are so many different kinds of stories and reasons for stories. So I thought this morning I would begin also by sharing a poem, or include rather in our time, a poem that speaks to stories. And then towards the end of our time, um, well, I'll save that for a little bit. Um, but it's a poem called Why We Tell Stories by Liesl Mueller. And I'm going to read it aloud, but if you are perhaps a bit like me and would like to be able to read along, I have included it as a PDF uh, and you can either click on the link for the poem that's in the video description or I'm told that at gracestlukes.org forward slash forum dash videos, that's a mouthful, you can also find this uh, PDF of Liesl Mueller's poem, Why We Tell Stories. So click on that link for the poem in our description, 
or you can go to that website um, of ours or on our website at graceandlukes.org forward slash forum dash videos or if that's just too much just close your eyes it's not a long poem but it's not a short poem either but the reason i wanted to read this poem and share a little bit about um, how wonderful it is and perhaps you'll think it as well um, is that it describes the importance of stories why we tell them the different kinds of stories um, and the way we tell them and how they connect us um, and even though there are so many different kinds of stories, perhaps they're really all just one beautiful human story as well. So here we go. Why We Tell Stories by Liesl Mueller. And it's dedicated to, and it says, for Linda Foster, which if you're like me, always has me beginning to be curious. Who is this Linda Foster? And why is this poem dedicated to her? Why we tell stories. Because we used to have leaves and on damp days, our muscles feel a tug, painful now from when roots pulled us into the ground. And because our children believe they can fly an instinct retained from when the bones in our arms were shaped like zithers and broke neatly under their feathers. And because before we had lungs, we knew how far it was to the bottom as we floated open-eyed like painted scarves past the scenery of dreams. And because we awakened and learn to speak. We sat by the fire in our caves. Because we were poor, we made up a tale about a treasure mountain that would only open for us. And because we were always defeated, we invented impossible riddles only we could solve, monsters only we could kill, women who could love no one else. And because we had survived sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, we discovered bones that rose from the dark earth and sang as white birds in the trees. Because the story of our life becomes our life. Because each of us tells the same story, but tells it differently. And none of us tells it the same way twice. Because grandmothers looking like spiders want to enchant the children and grandfathers need to convince us what happened happened because of them. And though we listen only haphazardly with one ear, we will begin our story with the word and why we tell stories by Liesl Mueller. So there are three stanzas, or actually there's three sections. There are many stanzas. There are actually 10 stanzas. Um, but this is all about storytelling. And if you notice, there's a rep repetition with um, the word because, because it is mentioned, if you take time to count, 11 times. Um, it's a subordinating conjunction if you care about those kinds of things. But if you think about why we use the word because, it's used to introduce an explanation or, in our case, perhaps to answer a question. And what is that question? Why we tell stories why we tell stories. And so that first section, section one, because, 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 there are three very different perspectives, if you will, um, or perhaps explanations, scientific or that like of, um, to describe the perspective of why we tell stories. I wonder if you could tell 
in that first stanza about leaves and damp days and roots pulling us into the ground, that it's speaking about the trees um, and our origins of life with the trees. Because we used to have leaves and on damp days to feel our muscles tug. Um, and when I think about roots, I don't know about you, but I think about those things that ground me and my ancestors and family and community. Um, and then I start thinking about who all those things, who those people are in those places that help create and help me know who I am. Um, so trees, trees in that lovely way of invitation of why we tell stories. Perhaps stories then help ground us, remind us of where we come from, connect us to what has been in the past. Then that second stanza, about flying, I love that. About, um, and it, wait, it used a word called zithers. Anybody know what a zither is? Extra points if you do. It's a musical instrument that um, in some ways looks like a harpsichord, um, but has lots of strings stretched across, which gives an image then of those bones in our arms and how it was describing once upon a time, a long time ago, when our arms and our bones perhaps look more like feathers, when we could fly, connecting us to our wonderful creatures of the birds, and how from that perspective, that's a reason and a story and a way in which perhaps if we think about flying, stories might also include ones that are about dreams and hopes and ambitions. I love that. So that third stanza, that third perspective, that um, explanation, that origin of life that perhaps connects us all and runs deep within us, and that's a pun intended, runs deep, has to do with water. Water, um, it talks about before we even had lungs and that beautiful image of a painted scarf um, floating. Um, how beautiful is that as we think about water and that life-giving water and the way in which we breathe and think about life and how water does give us life and because it speaks to then how we move from lungs into speech um, and how language is then a part perhaps as well of our stories. That section that, section that comes after in part two, um, I love how it begins, we sat by the fire in our caves, which suggests to me that we've been telling stories a long, long time. It's a tradition that goes back long before we were walking this earth and will continue long before, long after we have left this earth. And if we think of our biblical text, that good sacred text, um, stories, yes. <clears throat> this, stand, this section, section two, um, I think is talking a lot about um, ways in which we want to believe for ourselves what could be um, and allow us to think of what we might wish for or hope for. Notice that it said, because we were poor, we made up a tale about a treasure mountain that would open only up for us. Stories maybe allow us to become even um, more than what we could imagine, more or perhaps of what we imagine for ourselves, but what is perhaps not even a reality yet. In stories, we can make ourselves become rich in this treasure mountain, or as we heard, we can solve riddles and um, be strong and powerful. Um, it makes me think about um, the genre of fairy tales, um, particularly, well, I'll say um, Harry Potter for me especially, with riddles to solve and monsters that have to be defeated, um, but fairy tales, um, Harry Potter, um, it also speaks to that section that says, and because we had survived, sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, that connects us again to those who've gone before us, 
um, and connects us and that perhaps our stories continue to resonate the stories of those who've gone uh, before us and perhaps then our stories too will carry on in those that come after us. And then section three, each time I think this uh, one section is going to be my most favorite and then it, it just they keep changing. But section three, because the story of our life becomes our life, because each of us tells the same story but tells it differently. Oh, I think it was Marilyn Nelson, a lovely poet and um, wise woman to be sure, said, we are our stories and they teach us and they teach others. I think particularly as a priest of the stories that I've shared and also heard, especially at funerals, um, as we remember and recall that loved one who's gone on to the next good world, they're remembered by stories and through stories. Stories precede us um, as well. And that makes me think about my poor brother, Charlie, um, who en endured a lot with all that um, he had to live through with me coming before him. We are six years apart. Um, and my word, um, I think I'm still paying for some of the damage I did for that good guy, but um, we are close together for sure. Um, and uh, I give thanks for him, but uh, stories precede us. And sometimes that's both gift and challenge, I will say. Because the story of our life becomes our life. And because each of us tells the same story, but tells it differently. Isn't that true? Have you ever been in a spot where many persons have seen something take place, but every person tells a different version of that same story? It makes me think of our gospels and how I don't think there's a single one that I would remove. That's good. But each one tells a different perspective of Jesus and emphasizes different parts, which all comes about um, and speaks to who that person is as the storyteller. And did you catch too in that line, none of us tells the story the same way twice. Isn't that true? Um, it kind of makes me think of those fish stories too, when I would fish on Horseshoe Lake and my first fish was caught Horseshoe Lake. Um, it was catfish. Um, and every time I caught that fish, no, every time I told that story about catching that fish, um, there was a new description and certainly that fish got bigger and bigger um, on that good Snoopy fishing pole that I had, fishing rod, but my goodness, um, stories are never told the same way twice. Uh, and then the part about grandfathers and grandmothers. Telling stories again how grandmothers may tell it could be different, at least, at least this poet thinks that they are, between grandfathers and grandmothers. But perhaps they share the same purpose, to be loved, to be remembered, to be respected. Some of my most favorite stories are from my grandmother in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, and I so can recall her telling stories of her life and how she would move her hands as she told her story and it's not only the story itself, but it's the image of those hands uh, that still speak and resonate to me. Um, I love how uh, the grandmother is described as a spider, weaving that web of enchantment um, <laughs> uh, to maybe of magic, maybe to keep the kiddos out of trouble. Um, but then that story that the grandfather tells the need to convince us that what happened happened because of them. So often my grandfather's stories were about the war, um, about his growing up and what he did, um, especially as an engineer and some of the bridges that he was a part of in building. I love those stories as well. It also makes me wonder, maybe you wondered aloud too, or not allowed, but can storytelling be gendered? Do women tell stories differently than men? Makes you wonder. At least this poet might give that suggestion that that's possible. 
But I love how no matter what, storytelling is important and that wisdom that comes from it is passed down from generation to generation. I love that. And then finally, that last paragraph um, about how we listen. Um, and sometimes I would have half an ear to my grandparents as they would share that story. Here comes another one from Pop, or here comes Cece, and she's got something to share. Might be a minute or so. Um, but that I listened. And what happens in that paragraph here with this poem connects us to then the ongoing nature of story and how we will pick up and begin our story with the word and. And as an English major, having talked now about because, we gotta talk about the word and, because it's a coordinating conjunction. Um, and it's a joiner, it's a connector. It connects a phrase to a phrase, another word to a word. Um, you don't often see a sentence begin with and or end with and, I guess it's possible. But mostly you see that word and connecting in this case, perhaps a story to the next story that's coming. And that's some of my hope of what might be coming up with all of us at Grace St. Luke's, to join our stories with other stories, with the human story, if you will. Um, we're gonna have an opportunity coming up next week uh, the, nope, sorry, my bad, the week of, oh, sorry, I'll tell you exactly right, um, the week of September 27th, uh, a time to gather uh, safely um, as well as we can um, in person with safe protocols. We'll even have some social distancing kits uh, to, to, for each group to have and conversation prompts as well so that we can begin to share some of our sacred story with one another. The groups are gonna be meeting once a week for five weeks, starting September, that week of September 27th. And there won't be any more than seven persons in a group, so we'll keep it small um, and intimate in that good way. We'll have mixes of genders, of ages. You may know some of the folks in your group. I hope you won't know everyone. We want you to have the opportunity to go deeper with some you may know and um, go deep as well with some that you have never maybe really had a chance to meet. Because um, as we can hear from this lovely poem, from some of my own stories, stories are sacred and they tell us a bit more about one another. Um, they connect us, connect us to our roots, they connect us to perhaps the dreams that we still have for ourselves, ways in which we're still wanting to try and fly, remind us of what is yet to be or what has not been able to be, and perhaps the hope and the yearning that still is there as well. But they connect us. And y'all, I don't know if there was ever a time than right now amidst this pandemic and COVID and the divisiveness that feels like it is so full right now, for us to especially be intentional about connecting with one another, honoring the other, um, and listening to that sacred story of the person sitting across from you, and then having that honor bestowed upon you as you are listened to, as your story is shared as well. We need it because we need one another stories are so sacred. They are. So things, what are you caring about these days? How are you coping with the pandemic? Is it day to day, moment to moment, hour to hour? That might just take up a whole story right, on, right there. Or what if I asked you to think about a tradition that has been passed down in your family? What would you name? If there's a childhood memory as well that gives you strength still to this day that you call upon to get you through something or to remind you or to encourage you, what is that childhood memory or moment? I like this question. What's your perfect day? Maybe once upon a time ago, it looked like something that looks very different 
at this moment, or maybe it's been consistent the whole time. And if you could ask God three questions, three is a good number, what would they be? All of these questions have stories that go with them. You have a story. Your friend and your neighbor have a story. So let's tell some stories soon. I hope that um, if you haven't already, that you will sign up for these five weeks of storytelling. Um, it's a little risky. It takes courage. But I can guarantee you that you will walk away feeling more connected um, to yourself, I believe to one another in your group, and I pray especially connected even more to the divine. So I'm looking forward to the journey ahead for deeper ways of connecting and walking with one another, for honoring another with listening, for the opportunity to slow down, an invitation to see more of what's going on in our life, but also in our neighbor's life as well, and how God and the Holy Spirit is moving through it all. If you have questions or want to know more about uh, this, the, this five week series, um, do not dally. Um, the deadline has actually passed, but perhaps um, there is still space. And I wanna make sure that if you're interested that um, you can join us. Anna Holtzclaw, Holly Payton, members of our congregational development um, heads uh, can answer any questions as well as myself. But I look forward to the good journey ahead with you all, um, and especially in these next five weeks. So take good care um, and looking forward to more of the journey.